All right. So we have Mr. Daniel Fox here today. Uh, he is my go-to home inspector from Hawkeye Home Inspection. Thank, Thank you. you for joining me today. Thank you. Um, we're just going to use this as a like, good informative session for some of my people out there. And okay. I'm going to make a little impromptu. I'm going to ask you some questions and just be normal about it, right? Do so, my best. Why don't you tell the people about yourself? So I'm Danny Fox, and I'm with Hawkeye Home Inspections. And Nicole, thank you for having me here today. Thanks for coming. Yeah, happy to. Um, all right, so let's start off, and let's just give the people what they want. So when I have a lot of people who will come to me after they've already been um, starting to look at homes, right? They go to open houses. Mm -hmm. um, they think they don't need an agent because they're still early in the process, which a lot of times That's turns into being like, I need to buy an open I need to buy that house right now, right? And I'm not prepared. I don't have a home. I don't have anything to know. What should these people be looking for when they go to these open houses without an agent? Like what would be maybe the top three things you would tell them to look out for that are like big red flags for you? Well, first you should hire a professional like yourself. Rule number one, you really should have proper representation. The big questions everyone always has is, what are the bones? How do the bones feel? So when you look at a roof, you want to look for a regular surface height, any lifting, cupping, curling, or spreading. It's always good to look at the rubber gasket around the vent pipe. That's generally where the first time a roof's going to start to fail. The vent pipe would be generally that white PVC pipe that extends through the roof. Look at the gasket on there. Make sure that isn't splitting, cracking. That's a good indicator of an old roof. In that what happens if they can't get on top of the roof to look at that, right? Well, that's what, what you some, call like, a home. If you can see from the ground, yeah. what would they look for off well, a roof on a ground? Obviously, look for your roof. Well, that, that look at the gutters, <laughs> the downspouts, and where they discharge. Very important to keep the water away from the structure. And you just want to look for general pride of ownership. When you look at a home, age really doesn't matter. It's how well people take care of their home. And that's what you're looking for is pride of ownership. No, I love that point because I say that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, first uh, day. Um, no, I love that because I say that a lot to people is pride in ownership should be number one thing that you're looking for. I have seen many old, old homes. Like I'm talking... 50, 60, 100 year old homes that have been taken better care of than 20 year old homes. And I would rather someone buy that well maintained 100 year ho old home than a 25 year old home that's been completely not touched and just lived in by people who honestly just don't care. Um, so yeah, I think that's a huge point that pride and ownership should be number one if you see things are meticulously maintained. Like when mm -hmm. I go in a basement and I see wires are like properly like hung and i see mm -hmm. like you know copper piping replaced on some of the plumbing things that you can see that people like didn't let stuff just go to shit to be honest right true yeah so perfect term no i think that's great um yeah. so i think when i go into basements more often or not mm -hmm. that's when i see more of like the oh my god issues <laughs> so if someone's to go into a basement and what would be like the one or two or three things that you would say like that would be a red flag to me how does it smell smell yeah that's a big smell thing smell is always a key one are there a lot of plugins if there are a lot of plug-in air fresheners why look at the base if there's any gypsum board drywall plasterboard whatever that may be Just look at it is there any water does it look like there's any signs of water coming in is the molding around the bottom is there any signs of past or active leaks those are a couple key things of course expose electrical connections another red flag or maybe a unit for pause yeah. No, and I've seen that's a like, smell is number smell. one for me for sure, right? But other things too is I look for is people sometimes don't realize what mold looks like. Yeah. Right. Many different molds. There's a lot of different ones, right? So I know sometimes you can see like black spots, mm -hmm. right? And they are more often than not probably mold, would you say? Well, look, <laughs> I didn't test it. It's not that tested, being said, but you know, I'm looking for high moisture signs. Black staining, high moisture, things like that. But you're correct. There's black mold. There's white mildew. There's white mold. So you really have to be careful. Right. But your nose tells you, I'm very sensitive to environmental issues. Right. So I kind of know it, feel it in you know, in my, my breathing. Yeah. So I know something's going on. And it's a pause for, hey, let's slow down and let's take a deeper look and see what we're doing. But trust your gut. Trust your nose. Take a look around. Right. I'm not looking at what's on Pinterest. 
I'm looking for signs that things that people don't normally look for, and that's why you have a home inspector. Yeah, no, that's true. And I think a lot of good agents, right, yeah. can do a good yeah. job of putting lipstick on a pig, right? Yeah. I mean, it's our job. So I will always advise my seller clients to, like, fix major latent defects because mm-hmm. I know that those can derail sales, and Correct. that's what I'm always trying to avoid doing for my clients. Mm-hmm. But... People will try to hide things. Right? Oh, yes. It's sad, but it's true. It's a seller's market. They can get a maximum return on investment for doing mm-hmm. very little work. And if there's something that they think they can just hide rather than disclose, like yeah. a lot of times they will. So rather than look at the beautiful staging, the fresh paint job, the coarse countertops, the stainless steel appliances, mm-hmm. smell the basement, smell the attic, <laughs> you know, yeah, like exactly. look for signs of black molds yeah. and cracks right Right. cracks are a big thing um foundation cracks garage cracks i will say though when it comes to cracks not all cracks are bad right that is true crack isn't always bad (laughs) you know when you look at a crack if it's bowed if you look down the side of the foundation wall you're looking for a bow that's moment of pause and concern if this if the crack is stepped where one portion is higher or extended up farther than the lower part that's another so you concern. mean like the crack coming like this? Yeah. Well, if you look down the wall and you see a bow, that's a Oh, the whole concern. wall bowing? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. If we look down and we see this crack is stepped where one part jets out more than the other, that's okay. a little item of concern. Every All concrete cracks. Right. That's why if you walk down a concrete sidewalk, you see those little cut expansion joints. So normal cracking hairline, spidering crack on the floor or on the corner, diagonal corner of a, a window. You see one like that? No, nothing to be concerned with. That's normal to right, see. Right. But horizontal, stepped, those are some of the ones you really want to look out for. Right, because, I mean, I've seen brand new construction yeah. homes that have cracks in them, right? Yeah. And the reason why I always tell people, like, Con- like you said, concrete cracks, yeah. right? Like, s- especially with expansion of hot and cold, that's when you mm-hmm. typically see it. You see settling cracks as the foundation settling into yeah. the land a little bit more, especially in New England where we have really wet, yeah, like grounds here. So cracks in general, like, aren't a scary thing. It's just like you said, normal. Looking out for scary cracks versus yeah. normal cracks. When you look at a crack, look to see if there's water coming out. Are there any trails of insects? Those are some of the items where you, you really want to stop, slow it down, and take a better look at it. Right. But just because you see a crack doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Now, moving on from cracks, this mm-hmm. makes me think of a time where I had a house under contract and we had a home inspection. And luckily, the home inspector went in the basement and he kind of did one of those like little pokes yep. into some wood. Right? Probe the sill, yeah. correct. That's what we call it, probing yep. the sill. Mm-hmm. So he's probing the sill right under where the front door was. Best spot. Best spot to probe the sill. First spot you start. Why was that? Because when you put in a stair system, you, when you walk up a set of stairs, look between the riser where the home starts and where the stairs end. What happens is Water gets in there, freeze, thaw, and you start pushing the structure away. But also what happens is water gets in there, and it migrates towards the wood. And that's a great spot for a termite, uh, underground insect to come up, build a mud tube when no one's ever going to see it, and they get up to that wood section, and that moisture is what they need really to thrive in wood. So that's a great spot to start there, and you want to probe it. Make sure you don't hit an electrical wire, but that's the best place to start, and that's where I always start. All right. Well, well, this is where that guy started, and I'm sure you can understand what's probably going to happen next is, believe it or not, he probed this thing with just a screwdriver, I think it was, Yeah. and it crumbled Mm -hmm. and all these termites just crawled right out of it Mm -hmm. right and this house was 15 years old so what pride of ownership exactly pride of ownership and you know what these people didn't do for 15 years they only used their garage and they only came in through the garage so Mm -hmm. every time it snowed at this house they never cleared the snow away from their front steps and because of that that wood in front of the steps rotted away, and uh-huh. that just opened them up for bugs and termites to just come in and make Best a nice little home. Them. Yeah. It's the ideal location for them. Another thing also is too much mulch. Oh, yeah, around the beds of the house. Because, right, because you want them to not be able to yeah. get up to that. That's Mice. why they said you see newer homes do have higher 
foundational spots, right? They don't start when, the siding. Yeah, when possible. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. You know, a lot of builders don't like to show the foundation because it's not pretty. But you definitely want that space between the mulch and where your um, framing construction starts. Yeah. My snakes, pests love mulch. Mm -hmm. It's wet. It's moist. They could burrow through it without a predator getting them. Yep. So you always want that gap in between. No, I love that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I tell people all the time, like, especially in the older homes where they had the siding all the way down to the ground, I'm like, that's going to give you issues, right? So take some siding off, you know, or put some PVC, mm -hmm. right, instead, because yeah. they're not going to attach to that. Um, so definitely something to be aware of is if on the outside, if there's a lot of mulch beds or yes. it's really close to the ground, make sure your wood siding is not within, what would you recommend, 6 to 12 six inches? 6 inches is, six I, inches? you know, like anything 6 inches above is great. 6 inches above the ground yeah. level where the bugs and the snakes and mm -hmm. the rodents can't In get into side, your house. Yeah. yeah. So I like to raise up the grade, put down some rubber or landscape fabric, and do a gravel perimeter. Once again, that keeps the pests away. You can absolutely use mulch wherever you need to, but it's not great at your home. Come out 24 inches from where the gutter drops, and then you could start your mulch, flower bedding, and stuff. You want airflow and sunshine to help keep the structure dry. Okay, because gravel... Bugs and pests and stuff like that won't get into? No, I mean, if you were or a bug, will. how difficult would it be for you to navigate over the crushed stone? Right. I guess. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I think that it's not impossible for them to get no. into that, but also helps with drainage. Drainage, right? airflow. Yep. So, water is going to come down to the stones. It's not going to suck into the stones, right? It's going to just kind of flood it's gonna out. Hit it. It's going to drain away instead of throwing mulch and mud against your structure. That way there you get that flow away. And airflow and sunshine is key to help keep your structure dry. So when you plant plantings, you want to don't plant them where they are today. Plant them where they'll be in five years. Right. You want that airflow and sunshine. I like to say, and getting back to pride of ownership, you want to be able to walk through between your home and the plantings. You want to look for the mud tubes or the termites that come out of the ground. Yep. They go up the concrete foundation, and that's where they get up into your structure. So if you could just walk through that, take a peek every once in a while, once again, pride of ownership, that's a good way to help keep a clean, pest-free home. Love that. All right. Good tips. Good tips. All right. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on, I would say once people do get a home, mm -hmm. what is probably like per season, like spring, summer, fall, winter, each one of those seasons, what would be the top maintenance tip you would give them? Well, I hate to keep repeating myself. But <laughs> downspot extent, water management. Big thing. Yeah. Especially in New England, right? And we vegetation. have a really wet... Yeah. You should there, yeah. probably have your gutters cleaned out once, twice a year. What time of year would you say to do that? Well, you definitely want to do it once the leaves fall. So November is a great time. It's right before winter. Yes. And then in the springtime. In the spring. Yeah. Once they might have even fallen even more, right? Well, that and also what happens here in New England, the water comes down, gets into the gutter. If mm -hmm. your gutter is not properly cleaned, it holds the water there, which then turns to ice. And then the ice blocks any drainage down. So what happens? The water wants to jack up under the structure, under the shingles. And that's how you could start getting um, water into your home. And now I've heard mixed reviews on gutters versus not gutters. What not a your, fan of gutters. You're not a fan of gutters? I am not. They are required in certain areas. Okay. Over your doorway, when you walk out onto your deck. No one wants to walk out onto ice. But you do them where you need them and where they should be. But you really have to make sure. What happens is a lot of people, they take their entire roof surface, which is, you know, call it 60 feet by 25 feet. Um, what you want to do is you, you take that roof surface, you condense it down to one spot, and you drop all the water where, right at your corner of your foundation. Why? Because the landscaper came by and they wanted to mow along your house so they pulled away your downspot extension and splash block so now we take that roof we condense it we drop all that water right there where does it go into your foundation into your lowest level right so and i mean i think a lot of those things comes down to like the proper pitch of your yard and like where six how inches your house, over 10 feet yeah how Ideal. and where your house is built right so like there's a lot of factors into that mm -hmm. they didn't consider those things in older yeah. homes but they do so more in now Correct. newer homes yeah um, and I know things like French drains can be preventative. I know people do, you know, 
crazy things to try to prevent water from coming yeah. in their basements, but there's just no guarantees, right? And I've seen True. crack X come in and fix cracks yeah. and holes. So there's a lot of things you can do, but the more I think people can do to the outside of their home to prevent water from coming in rather Correct. than just stopping it once it's already coming in and not do anything to the outside, like the better you are because right. yeah, you don't want to just put a band-aid on a yeah. lesion. You want to like prevent the lesion from happening in the first place. Couldn't agree more. Something like that. Oh, that yeah, good. no, that works. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know what you're saying. All right, so you what know, other... Every basement will leak under the right conditions. Right. And there's generally two ways it happens. From the ground up, which is a little more difficult, French drains, sump pumps, battery backups, the discharge pipe goes 15 feet away from the structure. That's something you need to do if, the, if it comes from the ground up. Most people, it comes from the ground or the topsoil in, yeah. and that's from too much mulch at your house. It's directing the water back towards the foundation. Once again, the downspot extensions, you're dropping all that water at your structure. It's going to want to migrate towards the warmth, towards your concrete foundation. So eventually you will get water. All right. And then... I'm sorry. Look at this week. <laughs> yeah. 12 inches of snow and, and then it just melted two inches two of later. rain in 48 hours. Right. Even the driest basement would potentially right. take on water. Yeah. So don't be surprised. Water is a powerful force. Yeah, I know. Um, I felt that because I told clients this week, I'm like, if you're looking at houses this week, check this out that basement. Day. Right. Yeah. This is when you're going to see water issues in your basement for sure. Um, now, how about like summer and winter? Right. Cause, Same thing. But, but no, but like other than the gutters, what was the one thing that you would say like maintenance tip wise? Mm, airflow and sunshine, Just, the mulch build up. Well, that's the outside, right? Anything yeah. inside the house? Yeah, change your air filters. Change your air filters. How often would you suggest to do that? Well, it really depends on you. Do you have pets? Do you keep your windows open all summer long? You get dust and pollen. Me, I have a lot of allergies, so once the pollen comes out, I shut my door. So I would change my air filters less than you would with pets, kids, Doors open, windows open, pollen. So right. you would change it more. So it really depends on you. Once you've lived in your home for a certain amount of time, a year, let's call it, you're going to say, wait a minute, every six months is when I change it. You may change yours every four months. So you kind of right. know when. And it's a simple process. Open up the little slot, pull out the air filter, the arrow always points in towards the unit, and is it clean? Yeah. If it's not, change it and buy a high quality one, not a cheap one. Right. The air velocity in an air handler or a, a split unit will bend those. So buy a good one for two bucks more. You'd be surprised how many people. I am people... not. <laughs> You're talking to the wrong guy. How many I people? Su- I will go into like a listing appointment and I'll be like, when's the last time you've changed your air filter? And they're like, never. And how long have you owned the house? Yeah. Eight years. I go in in the wintertime <laughs> and they seal off the return filter at the top of the steps. Wow. Because they think that's where cold air comes in. No, that's how your house breathes. You need to you need to keep oh that clean. God. Yeah, like, I mean, these are just things that when, one, a they waive a home inspection, right? Which mm-hmm. I hate when my clients do, but I've had a lot of clients have to do it over yeah. the years because of, you know, just competitive market that yeah. we're in. So. And the only time I'll ever advise a client to waive a home inspection is if I've seen pride in ownership, mm-hmm. I've seen it's meticulously maintained, I've seen it with my eyes to know yeah. that there's no major concern, and even then, I will suggest for them, after you close, you still get a home inspection. Couldn't agree more. So it's not ideal, but I feel comfortable. Yeah. I would buy this house without a home inspection. Yeah. That's the only time I'll tell people to do it. You know, no house is perfect. Two no. million bucks, two weeks old, it's got stuff. Oh, yeah. You want to make sure. The other thing, too, is make sure your bathrooms are properly venting to the exterior in an approved flap. Right. I take a hot shower. You take a hot shower. He takes a hot shower. We don't want that wet, moist air into a hot attic. That's how you can get environmental issues, high moisture, black staining. So that's something you really want to focus on when you're walking around a house. Do you see bathroom vents? Do you see the flapper? Right. Those are key elements. Right. And to that, I will say that older homes, that's not required, right? But newer right. homes, it is. So if you're buying an older home, you won't be able to see that because sometimes they even put in a bathroom yeah. vent, but it just vents into the, to the attic, attic. That right? was common standard and practice. And I saw that happen with multiple homes over the last couple of years. And what it did is it just vents it into the attic and then it caused mold. Correct. So if you're going to see in a house without an agent – go into the attic, see if there are tubes from where the bathrooms are and they vent out to mm-hmm. the outside of the house, right? Yeah. Or look outside of the house if it's like for some reason you can't get into the attic, whether it's not, mm-hmm. you know, you can't get up there a ladder, there's no pull down. 
um, go outside of the house. And if you see vents on the outside of the house, that's where the bathroom's probably venting out from, right? Yeah. Same you, thing with above the stove. Correct. I mean, that's not, you don't have to do that these days. That it's is not plus. ideal. It's more of like, that's a great thing to have, especially Absolutely. if you tend to cook with a lot of heavy oils or whatever it may be. I've seen a lot of houses that just have like oil stains on the ceiling because it just it vented up from the microwave and it just went there right it is, on the yeah, yeah. It's just oil raw yeah. on your ceiling. So there are pluses, but for the preventative of mold, which can be very toxic to people, if, mm-hmm. especially if you have any kind of allergies, allergies right? Yeah. Stuff like that. You want to make sure that you're not breathing in these yeah. mold spores and make sure your house is properly breathing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Air quality is a test that you could perform. Right. A radon test is recommended here in New England. Radon. Over 20% of radon homes radon have that. <laughs> um, getting back to bathroom vents, if you are with someone, it's always nice to turn the bathroom vents on without saying anything and then walk the exterior of the home and see if you see those vents opening up. But that's something that can be done and handled. The important thing in a home inspection when you see high moisture, black staining, potentially the M word, the important thing is you identify it. Then you figure out why it's occurring, right. whether you don't have the mass save insulator cap, your bathroom's on venting to the outside. So important thing is identify it and then call an environmental qualified licensed environmental specialist to come out, test it, treat it, and monitor. And it's really, and I've had a lot of clients that this has happened to recently, even one we have on market right now, that the first people who came in, they did a home inspection, they found mold in the attic, and they walked away because of it, even though my clients were willing to remediate it, right? Yeah. Once you properly remediate mold, it's no longer a concern. You should probably, you know, keep an eye on it, but it's gone, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. About 40% of the homes I inspect have high moisture black staining 40 percent uh, yeah at That's least 40 percent wow yeah. it's way more than i thought it would be yeah no about 40 percent right. once again important thing is you identify it figure out why yeah T- test treat monitor move on yeah and it's not going to kill you once it's remediated. No. Nope. It's not even a danger or harm. It's nope. gone. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. I mean, the fact that these buyers just walked away, even though my clients were willing to completely fix it, I was just, I was like, wow. Um, Stay off the internet. <laughs> yeah, right? They're like, Call. WebMD, like, I'm going to die immediately because I was even showing this house, right? So, yeah, people just need to be fully educated and understand that once things are fixed, it's not a big deal. Because they're going to have a lot of older homes that you're going to see, especially because people are lowering their purchase prices because yeah. of interest rates. Yeah. And you just, if you're going to look at a good house, the house is good, but it has little issues, let it be fixed. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. Mold is everywhere on this planet. Yeah. Everywhere. There is mold. If you open up your refrigerator, pull out the rubber gasket, look in there, that little black standing, that's the M word potentially. I got mold on my strawberries from last week. I have mold on my shrubberies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like, so you know, we don't live together. <laughs> I rinse them. I wash them. I still eat them. Yeah. It's not going to die, probably. Well, you're tough. <laughs> I'm afraid of her. Just putting that out there. No, but it's not like gross no, black yeah. mold. They're not but rotting. mold is everywhere. It's like the start of the spores. Maybe on one or two of them. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. You know? It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. So... Long, yep. long, long story short, don't be afraid of mold. Right. Especially in an older home yeah. where you're kind of touching on what you said earlier, older homes were meant to leak air. Breathe. Your windows weren't insulated. Yeah. Your door wasn't insulated. So that's what occurred. So it was okay to vent your bathroom into the attic back then because your health breathed a lot more. Oh, my God. You had yeah. a lot of leakage and airflow. What's happening now is a lot of people going out – Energy efficiency, they're putting in all brand new windows, they're sealing every crack, they're doing everything, but they're not closing the gable vents. Those are the two little vents on the outside. And their bathrooms are now still venting to the attic. They have been for 20, 30 years, let's say, but now that we closed our home up, we sealed it all up, it's not breathing properly. Right. So if you go out and you put in new windows, Use the Mass Save product if it's um, available in your community. But then make sure that your bathrooms are properly vented in that you've aco- you've changed your venting to accommodate a tighter sealed home. Right. And I 
I do sell some a lot of newer houses, mm-hmm. and with these brand new, like new construction, people are just the first owners of these houses. They actually advise people not to use the attic for storage anymore mm-hmm. be. because of how much insulation they're putting up there and how tightly they're sealing these attics. Right? True. They are not what we call. Not, what's the word? This is a hot attic, and what's the other one? So a hot attic is no venting whatsoever, no ridge, no soffit, no gable vents. Yeah. And what they do is they add uh, closed or open cell foam in the rafters. Okay. So now you don't have a ridge vent, the gable vents, or the soffit vents. A properly vented attic, if you were to just do a traditional attic, the air flows from the soffit overhang up through the rafters and out the ridge vent. So that works, but when you have those gable vents, those little windows at the edge, it causes turbulence, and the air doesn't flow like this, like a termite mound. The air comes in on the lowest part of it and extends out. So I personally am renovating a home right now, and I did a hot roof. No venting whatsoever, open and closed cell foam, and that way there, I like that, and a lot of the better buildings are going that way. And but they say you shouldn't be storing stuff up there because of the temperature and because of the lack of airflow, right? Well, I uh, talk to your licensed professional. There's a lot of Miss Yeah, represent- and you know, yeah. really once again, talk to a professional and they'll guide you through yeah. the process. Some so, vents yeah. need some roofs need to vent, some homes do not. Yeah. So with this in particular, last couple new construction mm-hmm. homes I've done, they've said You shouldn't be storing stuff up there because of how much insulation and lack of airflow there was. Mm -hmm. But because of that, the home is more energy efficient, right? So they said, use your basement for your storage rather than your attic. So, I mean, to each their own. There's also the more breathable ones that are typically the older ones. Yeah. But that, again, could be more cause for mold, I guess, right? If you're getting more airflow in there. So there's neither are bad. They're just different. And just depending on which one you have, you should just be educated on how to properly use it. Right. Each home is different. Talk to a qualified licensed professional. If what you really want to do, call Mass Save. They'll come out to a free energy audit. If you live in Massachusetts. Talk with them. Well, yeah. There's nothing in New Hampshire like that, right? Um, I'm not sure about that, but I don't think so. Yeah. That's a Um, huge. If you guys haven't already. Concord, Wellesley does not. Because they have their own utility company. Right. Littleton. I live in Littleton. Littleton. We have our own utility Littleton company. Same Owens. idea. MassSave will not come out to Littleton yeah. Homes because, I mean, we have one of the cheapest electrical bills in the state because of that. And they fix it really quick. When and it it's amazing, down. right? Yeah. We never lose power. Yeah. We have really cheap electrical bills. But if you want to have MassSave come out, they won't do it. Yeah. Well. So if you live anywhere other than Littleton, what do you say? Uh, Concord, Wellesley. Concord, Wellesley. All these towns that have their own municipal electrical. Mm-hmm facility um call mass save have them come out they'll do a free energy audit Mm -hmm. and they will tell you if you need more insulation they'll give you free light bulbs that if you need new windows or heating system or anything they'll give you really great programs to do good cheap financing they'll even give you discounts on them like if you live in these towns 100 percent, you should call them for a free energy audit it's like kind of a no-brainer. And they'll give yeah. you stuff for free. Programmable Wi-Fi thermostats. What, yeah. 200 bucks a pop? Yeah. Dehumidifies. Seven-year interest free loan for heating and cooling. Sixth year, 12th seven month, free in- last seven check. Seven years interest free. If That's your huge. appliances are over 25 years old, they may, may give you free ones. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So... No brainer. Take advantage of the program. And Absolutely. as I move through the inspection report, I will make a note, discuss with Mass Save. Yeah. So at least you have a list when they come out. Mass Save will come out one after the, once you get your first electric or gas bill. Yep. Yay. You can hit our link, put in your account number. They're going to come out and do a free energy audit. Why not take advantage of the program? They're out yeah. there. They're here to help you. Kind take of a no brainer to me. So yeah. call Mass Save. I use them. And I renovate houses. I mean, I live in Littleton, so I can't. But if yeah. I didn't, I would. Call me. <laughs> Dan at Hawkeye. Call Dan at Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to radon. Yes. Hit me. New England. We have a lot of radon here because Correct. of how much? Bedrock. Rock. We have into... The stuff you can and can't see. As bedrock decays, puts off a gas commonly known as radon. A little heavy in air, so it tends to sit in the lowest level. Similar to the M word in an attic. Mold. It's <laughs> test it. Get your readings. If it's four or above, the EPA recommends a mitigation system. Call a professional. They'll put it in. 
They'll vent it to the outside. Move on. It's not a deal breaker. It's a half a day job. Right. And I will say this should be tested 100% because there has been studies that show that radon can cause cancer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So correct. it is a silent killer. Yeah. People don't even, they've lived with it for 20, 30 years. They didn't even know it was in yeah. their basements. And in, honestly, in New England, it's in probably, if I would take a guess, this is Oof. just a wild guess, I'm going to guess 90% of basements. <sighs> yeah, look, there's a lot. Right? My Groton home was 55 zero. Wow. 55? No, it was 5 zero. Oh, I'm 50. like, what? I didn't well, know that was possible. 50. 50. EPA recommends four or above. So that's one. Yeah. Hate to say it, called the guy. They came out. They did it. They got rid of it. And once again, really, one other thing: radon in air is a real thing. Everyone's heard of. Oh my God, that person died of lung cancer. They never smoked a day in their life. There was a famous actor last month who came out with lung cancer. Never smoked a day in their life. Potentially, radon was a a cause of right. that. And it's because you breathe in this gas through the air, right? Yeah. And you don't even know it's there. You it doesn't don't. smell. It doesn't taste. It is coming out of the rocks, coming out of the foundations, mm -hmm. and it is coming into people's basements that are below grade, Yeah, and it is a silent killer. So yeah. it's a real thing. People should actually test for this whether they've done it before or after they buy a home. True. It's a simple fix. They come in, like you said, they install this big PVC pipe with a fan built yeah. in. It be creates better air flow through mm -hmm. the foundation yeah. and it just bypasses it, it all yeah, there's no, after that it's no issue i think i mean this when i got into the business i think it was only like 900 dollars to remediate now i think it's probably closer to like 1500 well, yeah depends on the level i don't want to talk prices but right. that's an average um my groton house was a little more because do, do we this, had such high I say, but the size. other one radon and air is real yeah my opinion but if you have a well there's radon in water, and mm. to me, that's a bigger concern. Yes. I'm in the shower. I'm standing over the sink. I'm standing over the washing machine. That's where you're getting the greatest exposure. Think about it. Radon in air is it's what coming thing? off the ground. It's coming off the rock. It's traveling up through the soil, up into your foundation, into your home. But radon and water is the same thing. You have a well. You have radon air in your well. comes up, comes through out in the shower and that's where you're getting a lot of exposure so if you have a well my biggest recommendation is test for radon in water yeah. radon in air is potentially a thousand plus but radon get remediating radon in water is a little more expensive yeah. <laughs> and you should call a good well company right i had a company i had a house this was a couple of years back now that they found radon in the water and luckily this town it was required to sell your home to test yeah, your Hawkington. water. This one was actually Pepperell or Townsend, oh, yeah, I believe. Okay, I yeah. forget which one. More and more towns. Are one doing of those it. towns. Um, yeah. And they required to sell your home to do a water test and provide it to the town. Mm -hmm. Now this one came back, luckily for my clients, with high radon, and the sellers had to we actually ended up delaying closing because this was test came out so close to closing yeah. that we it was delayed they ended up having to install this radon mitigation system in the water in the well yeah. it was like sixty five hundred dollars yeah, and this was say. years ago like four yeah. years ago i think so everything's gone down don't worry yeah i mean it's probably closer to freaking 10 grand now yeah. for all i know but all right. yeah it's um it's not cheap but again same idea it's a, it's a yeah. toxic thing and you should to save yourself your family your kids yeah the long term of the what ifs. Yeah. Get it get it fixed. Ten years living in home is not a long time. No. You well, know, I read somewhere that it said if you're gonna potentially sell your house within seven years, you shouldn't buy a home. I think that was you that said that. <laughs> well, I mean it depends yeah. on the situation, yeah, right? right? If you're no, looking no, no. to buy a big family yeah. home and you're overspending on it yeah. and your interest rate's six and a half percent, yeah, probably not the right time yeah. for that house, but yeah. buying a a condo house or a house you can put a little sweat equity in, you yeah. know, never a bad idea. Yeah. But And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you really should hire a professional that can guide you through some of these 
potential things. Most people that I meet, if it's not on Pinterest, they're not really interested <laughs> in the house. If it doesn't have the dark lower cabinets or the white and blah, 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 blah. We look for different things right. that really matter over the long oh, term. Yeah. And that's why you should hire it's a It's not about lipstick on a pig. It's no. about buying a great product that yeah. is going to be safe for you and your family for however long you need to live there. And the biggest thing, and I always tell my clients, is it's about return on investment. Yeah. Because real estate is a great investment if you do it right. Don't be afraid to buy a house that needs a little work. No, but I will say you don't want to have too much work. Because no. Inflation, it depends on people. It depends on people. And this, like, if you're a contractor who could do the work yourself, yeah. like it. go buy a flipper and I make can't a ton buy of a nice house. Yeah. I can't. I don't you, know why. You can do work. I can. And you can save a ton of money on it. But if and you're I someone like me who's like, I'm not even going to swing a hammer at something, yeah. I'm not going to go buy a fixer upper yeah. because I'm going to, knowing my taste, I'm going to overspend on a house yeah. to make it how I want to. And if I'm going to sell it in three to five years, I'm mm. going to lose money on it yeah. because See. the cost of materials and labor right now yeah. is so high it's frightening right and don't get me wrong you could probably find someone who will do the work cheap but then you could be devaluing your house yeah. because someone's coming in and just doing a shitty don't job over personalize it yeah yeah do it cheap and make it look nice and then just my least it. favorite home to buy is a flip yeah a lot of these homes, people have lived there 20, 30 years. They've raised a family, got a little big. They don't need it anymore, but they took care of it. Right. So you know it's gone through 20, 30 years of spring, summer, winter, fall. Spring, summer, winter, fall. Right. They've had 20, 30 inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> so it's gone through its paces, and if it was going to leak, there was a good chance it would have leaked. But when you buy a home that's all pretty and sparkly and twinkly like a holiday mm – -hmm. It hasn't gone through that cycle yet. So be cautious and be well informed. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with some flips. Yeah. But you really need someone to take a good hard look at it and not just look at the paint colors and flooring and counters. Now with that being said, how often do you buy and sell homes? As much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't buy a nice one. I don't know why I can't. So like every two years? No, I, I do the slow flip. I buy them, I live in them, I fix them. When it comes to a home, you're never done. You just stop working on things. Right. So I move on. I mean, I just bought one. It was vacant eight months. I'm total gut from top to bottom, inside and out. Are you living in these homes or not? I do. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's easy for me. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. You know, once the home is done, I love it crazy neat and clean, but I can live on plywood, and that's what I do. And right. this, my last home bought this home. This home will buy my next home. And, and but what's get... the average time you're living in this home? Well, my last one, I lived there 12 years. I was married. We bought a complete dump. We fixed it up. It's what we loved. And I we lived in it for so long. It was massive. It was beautiful. I made a ton of cash. Yeah. And now I bought this one. My first year I owned it, I didn't even live in it. It wasn't a crack house. It was actually a meth house. <laughs> to be specific. Not be crack, specific. but meth. Hey, look, you know, you got to separate the two. Marlboro. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> no offense to Marlboro people. <laughs> That's okay. Marlboro, I, I get you back. <laughs> no, look, those, for me, yeah. like you said, Nicole, I, I like that. Yeah. Not in sports, not in the video games. You I love working on my house. You don't need to put kids in house. school systems. Yeah, I don't get kids yeah. in the school system. It's so, fun. it's good. Yeah, I get it. When there used to be an old saying, when there's blood in the streets, buy the homes. <laughs> and I can't help but not. I mean, I I'm not going to. the blood to, in the streets. <laughs> not going to Death Valley to buy a house, but you know. <laughs> There's gems out there, and yeah. if you don't mind putting in a little hard work and a little sweat equity, yeah. if you don't know how to do it, go to your local um, evening classes. There's classes, 200 bucks. Oh, yeah. Show mean, you how to operate You can home. learn to do anything on YouTube these days. Yeah, you know, look, we have a phrase, <laughs> YouTube houses. YouTube. Oh, man. Look, plumbers protect the health of the nation. Hire a professional plumber. Yeah. Plumbers, electricians. Electricians, HVAC, good to do. Plumbers, want... electricians, HVAC. Yeah. Don't do it yourself. Don't go on a roof. You need, if you need a permit for it. Yeah. Don't skip that. I'm renovating a house. Had to hire a qualified licensed plumber, electrician, HVAC. I went through Mass Save. I didn't need a permit for that, but he did because he ran gas. So try it. Yeah. 
Go to a class. Learn how to paint. Home Depot teaches you once every two months. Teach how to paint. Go to a paint store. If you're going to buy a house, go to a paint store. Sherwin-Williams, I go to. I open up an account. They're great. They've guided me through what I really want to use. I got a discount, and they kept track of all my colors and sheens. Wow. So that's a plus. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I wouldn't dare do that because it would look like lipstick on a pig. Oh. <laughs> She's very fancy. <laughs> that's why I have great connections with people, you know? Between connections. My... Connections Could, is I, everything. I, I, they're invaluable. I have some amazing contractors, plumbers, electricians, you name it, of people who yeah. I trust, who yeah. I refer to anyone, and who aren't going to overcharge people. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. Like you, and I tell people all the time, if you're going to renovate something in your house, mm -hmm. get like three to five quotes yeah. because they will probably more likely all be different. And there's going to mm -hmm. be one that's way overpriced. There's going to be one that's way under budget. And don't go with either of those. Right. Go with something that's in the middle. Go yeah. with someone who's probably a really hard worker they yeah. maybe are themselves and maybe one or other person on their team mm -hmm. and they're going to do a really good job and they have pride in their work yeah. and they're just trying to like make ends meet yeah you know and support those people support the hell out yeah. of those people i would rather hire those people all day than someone who runs this giant company Ugh. with like five or six vans or trucks and they yeah. you know are worried about just payroll over anything mm -hmm. else because those people don't give a shit about quality no. they care about the they gotta profit feed margin. the machine yeah they care about their profit margin that's yeah. it so don't hire these people who are nationwide companies because they don't care about the quality and the pride i mean mm -hmm. i can't say they don't care they don't. they're not gonna care yeah. as much right rather than this mom and pop shop who is going to give you everything and then they will yeah. You run job. into them at the field hockey practice. You run yeah. into them at the lacrosse practice. Yeah. Another thing, too, when you deal with contractors, you need to, before you hire, uh, call in three contractors, you want to have a clear scope of work. And all three individuals are pricing that job on the exact same terms. So if I want Anderson windows, I put in I want Anderson 5000 series. I want a lock and bar combination boiler water heater. I want X. I want this. You need to make sure that that is everyone is quoting you the same. Right. Because when I say I want windows, there's very different grades of windows. And if you have a small job and for people that are new to the community, Talk with your agent. Your agent knows a lot of qualified people. But a great place to start, too, if it's not such a huge job, go to your local fire department. You need a plumber. You need an electrician. You need a wallpaper. Lost art. Go to your fire department. A lot of those people, men and women, they have a main job where they get their insurance. They just want money. So I know where they work. I know you got three days off. I'm going to pay you to paint my house, and they want to get it done. So I like people like that, and I do like the mom and pops over the large yeah. companies. I never even think to think about the fire department people, because that's so true. That's though. why I have you hire a friend. professional. It's true, right? I have a friend who is a firefighter, and on the side, he does, like, gutters and things like that, right? Like, Yeah. Because he— They have insurance. Yeah. Insurance is everything when it comes to contractors. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. Hmm. All right, hit me. Next one. <laughs> and with that being said, if you guys need a trusted contractor for anything, even if you've already bought a house for me years ago or you're mm -hmm. going to buy a house for me at some point, um, reach out to me anytime. I would be glad to connect you with yeah. my local trusted vendors. You know. In the same. Um, if we've done work in the past, feel free to call me today, tonight, tomorrow, six months, a year from now. Happy to answer any questions you have whenever you have them. That's it. That's what I love about you. I have clients who have done home inspections with you, and they – Say, yeah. hey, I just reached out to Dan a year later and he's awesome. You know? Yeah, so. well, great. That's, you know, you got to go for the long buck in this That's business. It. You can't go for the quick buck. No, it's 100% it. Yep. Because you can't be screwing it's people. It's about relationships in this yeah. business. It's not about, and I did this in my last podcast, it's not about just making that yeah. that commission check that, that yeah. month. It's about. It's about Nicole. Long lasting relationships yeah. that they want to use me for their first house and their second house and their third house. And they're going to tell their friends and their family mm -hmm. and they're all going to use me. That's in this business, one job leads to another. I mean, that's the plan, right? Yeah. If you do a good job. Stand I'd... by it. Yep. Really. True. You know, it's funny. Home inspections, I hate to say it, it's Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious. I mean, it doesn't look right. We need to take a look at it. Yeah. You know? That's yeah. True. 
Hmm? All right, now I think it's time for you to ask right, me a get question. Get that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for you to ask me a question. Well, what do you think is... I'm sorry? Yeah. Sure. Give me a good horror story. That'd be good. Yeah. Like, for instance, the YouTube bombs. Sure, yeah. Give me a good YouTube home, yeah. Yeah. Well, getting back to the YouTube home. Look, (laughs) anyone can watch a video and think they know what they're doing. But a lot of what things go on in the home are in art, like anything. You're a professional at selling and buying homes. You know how to guide people through it. Just because you watch the video doesn't mean you can buy and sell homes. Same comes to YouTube homes. Yes, you can watch a YouTube home on how to paint. Highly recommend it. I think painting is a great return on investment for especially home buyers, and it's fun, and it connects you to the home and you can say wow someday look i painted that when you show your mother your cousin your neighbor yeah i didn't just write a check i did that that it kind of grounds you to your home but you can't watch a youtube video and install a boiler you really shouldn't there's so many things that could go horribly wrong. you need to make sure that your boiler air handler whatever it may be is properly vented carbon monoxide is a killer I did a home earlier this week, and it was a flip, and I was nervous, and I really slowed it down, and I took a good look, and I found that at the boiler, the boiler, the vent pipe didn't even connect to the chimney. It was loose. It was hanging, and here's the chimney. Here's the thimble. Here's the duct. It wasn't even connected. That's dangerous. So that could carbon monoxide kill you. Literally pouring into the house. Absolutely. So yes. People literally could have been sleeping at night and just died. 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 Yeah. Straight dead because these people didn't know what they were doing. Take a good night. And no say good night. And that's it. No one who didn't know what they were looking for wouldn't even know that. I know two people personally that have died from carbon monoxide mm. poisoning. That's terrifying. Horrible. Good night. Never to wake up again. Wow. Got to be careful. Know your, know your strength and weaknesses. Don't be afraid to hire a professional. Even if you hire a professional, ask them what they would do. See if you could work with them. Maybe they would allow you to work with them as a helper. Learn it. Take some classes. Don't be afraid to reach out. But YouTube is not the end-all be-all. Well, and with that being said, if you're going to look to buy a flip, even though it's going to look really pretty. Oh, I see them. Still get a home inspection, whether it is. Most important. There more than anywhere. So especially, I would say, if you have just bought a flip, if you had to waive the home inspection to buy the house, Mm -hmm. get one before you move in. Yes. So I do a lot of, hey, I bought this house. Please tell me what did I buy? Please. (laughs) I mean. I do a lot of those because You've done they, a couple of mine. <laughs> they, they were pigeonholed into buying a home to make their offer more attractive. They've already lost five homes. Yeah. Hire, have me come out, show you. Look, a home inspection shouldn't be bad, bad, bad. Oh, my God, get that looked at. Right. A home inspection should help prepare you to live in this house safely, right. financially responsible, show you how it works, and give you the best guesstimate of potential bills down the road. I That's think you, what a home yeah. inspection should be. Homes are so complicated now. Right. It's not just a boiler and a water heater. There's air recovery. There's geothermal. There's heat pumps. I mean, the list right. goes on and on and on. I They're think you not... did three this year just for my clients alone that had already Why only bought three? the homes. You're like one of the top realtors around. <laughs> the no. diamond No, no, group. after they had bought the house. Oh, yeah. Because oh, they had yes. to waive the home inspection yeah. to get the house. I think you did three post closing for yeah. my clients and i said call this guy do it after yeah. you close and you came in and you did the home inspection and all of them yeah. said nothing really major popped up which was great because great. i again am super uh big on i will not let you wave a home inspection unless i feel very confident that yeah. this has been pride and ownership yeah. and there's nothing crazy right yeah. all of them came back and said very minor things nothing yeah. big which is a relief for me because it shows i kind of yeah. know what i'm talking about right yeah right but it also gave them peace of mind of knowing they're not moving into something that could be hazardous to them and how it works right and what how should i look yeah. for what how can i maintain why? this house what yeah. should i look for how can i take care of this house yeah. why are things. gutter cleaning important why right. are my downspout extensions important yeah. why does my house feel cold over here and not over here right and reference back that 
report that you give them because you give them a full yeah. written report after the home inspection. Multiple pictures, yeah. suggestions, yeah. recommendations, and also, hey, you better get you better look at this and be prepared to um, make some changes in the near future. Right. So What's most importantly? If it What's was today, what's right. next year? Absolutely. If it was me and I was getting one of those written reports and I was buying a little bit of an older home mm -hmm. and it probably had a list of a dozen things that need to be maintained, I would do the obviously the big, bigger, oh my God, these are scary yeah. things at first, right? But then as I lived in the house, every three to six months when I had a little extra budget, I yeah. would address one of those things. Yeah. I would say Put every year, I'm going to, yeah, print this out, put on things, say, I'm going to save to make sure that this gets yeah. fixed this year because you don't want to go sell that house three, five, 10, 15, 20 years from now and not fix any of those things. And now they're mm -hmm. bigger, major issues that yeah. are going to cause you to devalue your home. Yeah. I mean, there is legislation out there. I don't know if it's started yet or not, where you cannot be forced to pass on a home inspection. So for any of you out there that want to make sure that this doesn't happen to you again, talk to your uh, local elected officials and see what you can do to help pass that legislation, oh so which would be that. wonderful. I mean, to be honest, and don't tell anyone, but I've done a lot of undercover consultations, home inspections for people. I've dressed up in suits with shoes, and I was the the uncle, the friend, the brother, the guy that builds birdhouses, and I was just there for you, but I was going around and doing inspections. Like looking at a, at a showing. At a showing, at a showing undercover, an yeah. And I'll tell you, there was this one in Acton, I won't say the street, it, was, it looked beautiful. I was so excited. I go in, I was dressed up, and I like to check every door and window, make sure they're smooth in operation. Every window was jammed up. Every door was kind of sticky, jammed, ill-fitting. Hmm. hmm. Let's go on. I went down to the basement. It was a dirt basement. And what did I see? It just was a Unbelievable timing, flying termites. <gasps> the entire sill was rotted, and some poor person bought that home. I mean, they probably spent 900 grand. There was a line down the street, Holy and somebody God. bought that home. Probably for $900,000, you said? Probably 900 grand. And now what? They're Your sill is so important. Getting back to Nicole's earlier thing, when you're, doing a, when you're walking through a, a showing, Check the doors, check the windows, lift them up, see if they're smooth. That's a good indicator that your house is settling. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's a scary game we're playing in yeah. this competitive seller's market, right? But yeah. unfortunately, for a lot of people, they have to waive home inspections to even stand a chance to get these homes. Yeah. Right? Uh, I've yeah. had a few that refuse to. And I fully support them in that decision, right? But yeah. they're, they've now been looking for almost two years. Three different couples. I did five inspections apiece for them during that wild COVID time. Five. Three like, separate couples. The pre-offer inspections. Yep. Yeah. The undercover, the go look, whatever it may be. I try not to get too involved in that. Right. But I came out and they lost all of them. Wow. And, and then they eventually got you one. to go to all those. Yeah. But it was wise. Imagine if you bought that house, right. 900 grand. For it had termites, yeah. every Pinterest, every yeah, gorgeous. whatever those. Gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. Had all the proper colors, all the looks, all the tiles, the subway, whatever it may be. It had all that, but that's not what I'm looking at. Right, and no one with untrained eyes would know to look for yeah. that, right? There's like clues, and I hate to say I'm a detective, but... You see one thing, a large sloping yard. Yeah. All the water, the current grid is directing water towards the structure. Well, wait a minute, what does that mean? Right. Well, let's check out the mulch. Let's look at the foundation. Let's see if we see any mud tubes because subterranean pests need water. Like yeah. all life on Earth needs water. So water management is key, affluent sunshine. Right. I hate to keep hopping on that, but all those are two of the biggest thing on the exterior. No, it's so true. And I, I pride myself in being one of the, and I wouldn't say few, because I'm sure there's a lot of us out there who do. I will pride myself in saying I will always tell my clients to not offer on a home if I have even the slightest bit of yeah. inkling that that is some, not something that's a safe investment for them. And I know too many agents who 
would not do that. They would I just will be like, not confirm nor deny. Right. And, 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 and another thing is I, I don't love my clients to go to open houses, but, and when I get busy, sometimes they have to, yeah. but I will say, even if you went to an open house and you want to make an offer in a house, I will make, I will go above and beyond and out of my way to go see that house prior to you making an offer. Because what I can see with my trained eyes versus mm. you with your Christmas morning eyes on, yeah. right? I call them Christmas morning eyes when they go into a house and they see the stainless steel appliances, the quartz countertops, the yeah. white cabinets, and everything looks beautiful. And you said they don't see these things that we see with our trained eyes. Mm. That's when they get themselves in these dangerous situations. Mm. You know? Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, termites. Wow. Imagine someone bought that house. Someone out there right now bought that house, and they're like, I wonder if that's my house. Well, once the... I mean, I guess it was never disclosed, right? Because they didn't probably didn't do a home inspection. They were probably not found. Hey, look, you want this house? Buy it. Don't ask any questions. Move along. Yeah. And they found out after the fact. And an like, uneducated yes, buyer that apart. was, like you said, Christmas eyes. Christmas eyes? Christmas morning eyes. Christmas right? morning eyes. The kids eyes. come right. down in the morning. morning. Like, yeah. I'm like, I got it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I literally, every time I have a buyer consultation, and, and a lot of my clients will see this and they'll probably laugh that, like, every time I have a Zoom consultation or whatever with them and I say, you know, you're going to go into these houses and you're going to have Christmas morning eyes. And I will see with my trained eyes, which you will not see. Mm -hmm. And they're always like laughing, like, oh, that's probably true. Like, it is. Like, yeah. I don't look for those nice, shiny things. I look yeah. for the what ifs and the things that you wouldn't even know to look for. Yeah, a lot of people, they're more concerned with where's the trash going? What will my friends think? Oh, my God. Is there room to host a party? Is there it? room yeah. to host Can a I party? A we love office. to entertain. Yeah. I'm not looking at that. Yeah. That's not what I. Do and once again, no house is perfect. No. Two million bucks, two weeks old, it's gut stuff. They're living, breathing things. Yeah. You need to take a look and monitor and watch and adapt to them the best you can. All right. Now, can we get back to my? All right. <laughs> no. Anything else? Yes. Do I look stupid? Right so, okay. All cool. Right. Um. So we're gonna get back to my question of. Sure. What questions do you have for me? Before we head out today. Well, let's see. Hmm. Where are you taking me for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, really, what could I do better as a home inspector? What kind of feedback have you received after your clients have met me? Did they? Is there something I could do more of, less of, anything like that, that you, as a trained professional, qualified licensed professional, what would you think I would do? do to help me be a better home inspector for your clients? No, I think that's a great question. And honestly, the reason why I call you again and again when my clients need home inspections is because you do a great job. I think you're very thorough. You do a great job of explaining situations without mm -hmm. them sounding scary because I've yeah. been through many home inspections where and most of the time when I'm on the listing side, right, and the buyers brought their own home inspector and they are terrifying yeah they are telling them that like this little thing that i know is not a big deal is like the end of the world yeah. and this house is gonna fall apart and burn to the ground and i'm like no it's not that big of a deal like i swear and these people are like you can see the panic in their eyes and this yeah. home inspector is not doing their job to be like this is not a big deal yeah. right so either a if you're getting a home inspection done and it's not by mr danny over here um and someone else is coming in and they are saying things to you you, a, you have the option to go back and you can work with your agent to negotiate mm -hmm. either A, the seller remediating or fixing or addressing that problem before yeah. you close. B, giving you the money to, at, to cover closing costs that could then have you fix doing this job. Yeah. Do your own research to know if that is a major issue yeah. that you can move forward and live safely in this house or not. Yeah. And again, coming back to the fact, I think you do a great job of educating people without scaring them yeah. and then they're, when there is scary things you're honest with them about that yeah. like hey listen this is something that is a major concern if i was going to move into this house and yeah. i would be careful about this right yeah. um but again with things like mold and radon and stuff like that you're just like hey listen like this is what it is i'm not testing it i would hire someone to test it yeah. once you fix it it's not a big deal and that's how it should be it shouldn't yeah. be like black mold spots you're gonna die yeah. save your children run far away right so yeah. i appreciate every time i bring you in Good i know thing. you're gonna do a great job i know you're gonna educate my clients and the biggest thing is like you said before every single time he gives them his personal cell phone number and he says you have any issues 
one year, two year, five year, mm-hmm. ten years from now, you call me and I will help you out. Yeah, no. And that goes well, a long I way. I appreciate that and thank you. I try and I, you know, every day I learn a little something different at a home inspection, whether dealing with the clients or the agent itself, which is great. Everything in a home is a situation almost. You have high moisture black standing in the attic. That's a situation. Important thing once again, you identify it. We try to figure out why it's happening. You test, you treat, you monitor, move on. But, you know, uh, almost everything in a home is a situation except for life safety and dropping home heating fuel into the ground. That's a big one. If you have oil, I always recommend you add it to your home insurance. You make sure that your copper line, that, that's the copper line that runs from the oil tank. You want to see it generally it has. It's a copper line with the orange jacket on it. You want to make sure that it's run through your lowest level, embedded in concrete, or secured to the framing where it's not going to get crushed, rupture, and drop home heating fuel. That is a big one, and that will make your home unlivable. And if you have a septic system, listen to your septic professional. Get it pumped out. Just because those wipes that everyone has says flushable, That means it passes through the toilet. It does not go through your septic system. Don't use those. Yeah. No, we could go on and on about all these little things all day, right? But that is so true. I had my previous house had a septic system. And same Mm. idea, like my daughter, I was like, she started using those, right? I was like, oh, they're flushable. We go to sell the house. We get a Title V. Ouch. Huge backup of them. Ouch. And we had to, luckily, they didn't cause any major, major issues. You caught them in time. Yeah. I mean, it was a blockage and we were able to fix it, but it was still like a $1,500 job. Yeah. To, to 15, remove. take it and run. Yeah. $1,500. They yeah. removed them. They fixed it. They were able to pass us. But that could have been, if that had been another year or two, three years of using those, potential oh, situation. Man, we could have been replacing a whole system of 30 grand. Easily. Oh, yeah. Uh, Groton House, 50. <gasps> 50. 50 five grand? zero. How big of a house is that? Uh, not that big. Ledge. Holy shit. Ledge. That's crazy. Yeah, 50 grand. Ouch. And you can't sell it without a Title five. Unless you have a cash You buyer. can't live in it without a Title five. Right. I mean, without a, with a faulty septic system. Yeah. Take care of it. Once again, take care of your home. Yeah. And a lot of people don't. What I, I notice a lot of people, they buy a home and they have to fix everything day one. You don't. Yeah. You have a lifetime. Give yourself a break. Yeah. I mean, think about everything you did to buy a home. Yeah. You saved. You scratched. You saved. You looked. You bought the home. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Give yourself a break. Yeah. Yes, you'll get the painting. You'll get to the quartz. You'll get to the lower dark cabinets, whatever it may be. Give yourself a chance. A home should be fun. Yeah. True. It's work, yeah. but it's fun. Yeah. It's yours. Yeah. Everything you do makes a difference. Right. And there's a lot of things Everything you, can you don't do <laughs> makes oh, a difference. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things you can do out there, too, if you just, like, research the right way that you can yeah. save so much money and make things look nice without, like, And that's where YouTube comes in. Right. And Pinterest. Yeah. Look at what people are doing for their walkway. Talk with your qualified licensed agent. What is my return on... Nicole, if I turn this kitchen half bath into a full bath what's my return on investment yeah. is this worth it yeah make that decision take that into your consideration hey you know what i don't care if i don't make a lot of money i've put in this bathroom but it works for me my mother's staying here i want her to have a bathroom full on the same level right then make that determination usually baths kitchens bring you money Everything you do doesn't mean someone else is going to like it. Right. That's so don't over-personalize it if huge. you are going to sell it. Absolutely. And I Declutter. I tell people all the time, like, if you're going to think of selling in the next, like, two, three years. Start now. Not only that, but call me in now. Now. Because I can come in and I can tell you the list of things you should do in the next two to yeah. three years that's going to give you a better return on investment. I had someone last year called me in and they're like i'm thinking i'm like i always say i'm like tell me what you're thinking you're gonna do first yeah. right and nine out of ten times i will knock that list in half yeah i will give you something more like not i will give you something that's a better return on investment mm-hmm. to do that's going to be more affordable yeah. and you're going to get 
way more bang for your buck. Yeah. So don't go replace the whole kitchen with new cabinets. No. Let's just paint them and put some new hardware on. It's Make it livable. You. Make it livable. You're just looking, especially if we're still in a seller's market. I don't know if we'll ever not be in a seller's market for yeah. a long time, right? Not here in New England. Make it livable. Make people be able to see yeah. it look nice. But don't go be gut renovating a kitchen or a bathroom. It's silly. Like, if it's still usable, just use it. Yeah. They have things like bath fitters now that you can get a new vanity at Lowe's yeah. for a couple hundred bucks. Like, yeah. new lights go a long way. Fresh paint goes a long way. There's no need to gut things unless they are broken. Right. You know, you've connected me with some buyers, pre and, um, pre-sale pre buyers, and I like to do a must-do, a should-do, and a nice-to-do list. Mm -hmm. Look at do this. Make sure you do this. It would be nice if you did this. Yeah. Maybe make those connections, something that will give you the return on investment. And what do you want to do? You want to sell your home. If you're putting your house on the market, you want to sell it. Sell it. Right. Get the most money you can and move on to the next one and start over and buy that one and make that one your dream right. home and pass it along. Yeah. Not everyone can buy the $900,000 house. Right. And if you are buying something that you know you're going to be putting money into, unless it's your forever home, which I yeah. consider 20 years is yeah. a forever home. That's a good right? one. 20, I had if, one. Yeah. If it's going to be a 20-year it. home, <laughs> that's the only case where you should ever consider – yeah. probably overspending maybe to your taste on what you're yeah. putting into it. Other than that, think about return on investment yeah. every single time. Even if it's your first, your second, your third home, yeah. you're not going to be there for 20 plus years. Don't overspend on it. Yeah. You know, home, when you own a home, you're a steward. You only, home, you only ho own this home for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Eventually, someone else is going right. to take this home. We only Whether have it's guardians or your children are, are going to sell it someday. Yeah. Right? We, these, I don't, somebody will live in this house after me, probably a couple families. Yeah. A couple families have lived before me in this home. Yeah. So just because just it's your forever home, it doesn't mean someone else isn't going to live in it someday. Right. And due to location and size... There's only so much a house could ever sell for. Yeah, in need. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, don't overspend. If you're buying like a ranch home and you want to put three additions onto it and do high end everything, a ranch home is only going to be worth so much money. You can, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, that's for any home, right? But like, but there's gold only, flows down. It's still. Even 20 years from now, that home can only be worth so much money. Yeah, it's still a Campanelli slab in, you know, some town. Yeah. Yeah. It's only, but make it your own. Oh, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank this you for fun. having me. I'm glad you liked I'm it. I'm hoping I will see you again soon. Yeah. And uh, if I will put his contact info below, guys. So if you are looking for a great home inspector, whether you're working with me or any other agent, mm -hmm. make sure to reach out to Mr. Yeah. Daniel. Feel Fox. free to give me a call at Hawkeye Home Inspections. Ask for Daniel. And as the founder says, we are not just home inspectors. We are home consultants for life. There you go. So give us a call. We'd be happy to come on out and give you our thoughts. You heard from the man. Thanks, guys, for joining. Well, thank you, Nicole. Thank you.